Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In my last couple of videos, I've been talking about the Chase Trifecta or the Amex Trifecta or some combination of the two. And when comparing Chase Ultimate Reward Points and American Express Membership Reward Points, I've been kind of hard on the Amex Travel Portal. I've been saying, don't use the American Express Travel Portal. That travel portal is trash for redemption. But let's today, in today's video, do a comparison between the Chase Booking Portal and the Amex Booking Portal, and is one actually better than the other? Let's do a test booking on something that I actually do need to and want to book. I'm gonna be taking an international trip to South Korea in May, and I'll be landing at around 5 p.m. Uh, on a Saturday night. So I'm looking to book a hotel near the airport that night, because I imagine I'll be jet lagged. So let's search both the Chase portal and the American Express portal for a hotel near the Incheon International Airport on May 2nd and then check out on May 3rd. So we're gonna do dual searches in both portals. Once your search results come back, I think the easiest way to compare is to view on map. So we're gonna click view on map in both portals side by side. If you're not familiar with the Incheon International Airport, it's on a man-made island west of Seoul. Seoul is the world's second largest city, so uh, you know basically they didn't have room to expand their airport. So they just built a cool fake island to the west and then built a brand new airport there in the 90s. So here are all the uh, terminals and the runways are behind it. But there's this little green space in front of the airport where there's, you know, 20 some hotels or whatnot. So if we look at these two, we'll compare them. All right, let's, uh, let's, how do we zoom in here? All right, so we're gonna zoom in and try and get the exact same bird's eye of this pavilion area that has a lot of hotels. Now, when you look at these two, you can immediately tell that the American Express portal does not have as many options as the Chase portal. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna first look at what options does American Express give us, and then I'm just gonna assume that Chase is also gonna have those same options. So if we click here, this is the Best Western Premier Incheon Airport, and the, it says uh, it averages $75 a night, and you can book with 10,803 Amex membership reward points. But when we go to the Chase portal, once again, $76, so that's a comparable price, but now it's telling us only 5,066 points. So once again, Amex is saying, we will book this room for you for 10,803 points, and Chase is saying 5,066. Now actually this comparison isn't entirely fair, because the Chase Sapphire Reserve is giving me a 1.5 boost when booking through their portal. So this should normally be, uh, you know, at one cent per point rate, this should normally cost uh, 7,600 points but it's basically giving me a 33% discount because my points get a 1.5 boost with the Chase Sapphire Reserve. But you might have already figured out what the problem is here. Amex claims that when booking in the portal with your membership reward points, you're getting one cent per point. If the booking for this hotel is $75, then this should only cost me 7,500 points. That's not what they're charging you in points in the Amex portal though. They're charging you 10,803. So that's like a 25% increase that just doesn't make any sense to me. Perhaps it's just that one hotel. Let's try another one here. We have the LG Airtel. This is going for $66 a night or 9,516 Amex points. Let's click on the exact same option here on Chase's portal and yeah, $67, but only 4,466 points. Yeah, once again, you're not getting anywhere near one cent per point when you use your points in the Amex portal. This should only cost 6,600 points, but it's for whatever reason marked up 30% once again. And the discount we're seeing in the Chase portal, once again, is what you would expect. If your points are worth 1.5, then you're getting a 33% discount on the what should have been a uh, 6,700 point cost for this Airtel. Now maybe trying to book a hotel in South Korea is just causing this anomaly in the portals. 
So we're going to try a different city. I also plan on going to Minneapolis uh, in like April. So let's try looking for hotels in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Let's do the exact same thing on the Amex portal and we can zoom in to near the Mall of America. So if I were to fly into Minneapolis, St. Paul, that actually gets you pretty close to their, uh, their, uh, the Mall of America. There's a bunch of hotels around there. Once again, you see the problem of, you know, here's, here's a huge international airport and Amex's booking portal is only giving you two options immediately near the airport. That's really bad. When we click on the Chase portal, there's just, yeah, a ton of more options. Now let's zoom in uh, near the Minneapolis St. Paul airport. And we have a bunch of options here. Once again, in order to compare, we're gonna have to see, we're gonna look at both, both of the two options that American Express is giving you, and then we'll, we'll compare it against Chase. The first one, it looks like, is a Baymont Windman Bloomington, and it's saying, $83 a night or 11,901 points. Let's go to the Chase portal and it's once again $83. So it's consistently the same dollar amount. But on the Chase portal, they're only going to charge me 5,554 points. And yeah, this this should be at 1 cent per point like Amex advertises. This should be 8,300 points, not 11,900. Our other option is this Country Inn and Suites. It's going for 177 a night or 25,000 Amex points. If we switch over to Chase, we can click on the exact, let's see, which one is it? Yeah, this one. So we can click on the same hotel and yeah, once again, 177 a night, the price, the dollar amount is always the same between the two portals but Chase is giving this to me for 11,800 points and Amex just ripping you off. It's more than double, more than double what Chase is charging you in points uh, consistently, consistently. In my last video, I did kind of a, which is better, the American Express Platinum or the Chase Sapphire Reserve. And if you're someone who wants the simplicity of booking flights and hotels through their portals, then this 1.5 boost, it's just so much easier to use. This card doesn't give you any multipliers. It doesn't give you that 1.25 or 1.5 boost in addition to the portal just ripping you off with terrible point values. Now you might be thinking, well, maybe it's just hotels, Jacob. So let's try again, only this time we're gonna try booking a flight. And I'm gonna use examples once again that would be useful to me. So what if we were to try and fly round trip for a week from Minot, North Dakota to Minneapolis, St. Paul? I know for a fact that only Delta does this direct, but we're gonna choose to search both in the Chase portal and the Amex portal for a Delta flight. Now, Delta is normally partnered with American Express, so potentially the Amex portal will be more favorable uh, because Delta is one of American Express's partners. Let's go ahead and test that. When we search in the Chase portal, it's saying that the cheapest flight that we can get is a Delta flight leaving at 10.44 a.m. nonstop. It's about an hour and a half. And the cost of the flight is $198, but to use in Chase points, it would be only 13,000 points. Once again, this is consistent. If you were to multiply 13,000 by 1.5, you would get the uh, 19,800 point total uh, without the multiplier for the Chase Sapphire Reserve. When we go to the Amex portal, it doesn't list the, uh, the, the 10 a.m. flight as being the cheapest. So if you scroll down, it's saying for this flight, uh, $269 or 26,000 Amex membership reward points. Yeah, there's really just no excuse for this. Amex is a Delta partner. Chase is not partnered with Delta. So I'm seeing a Delta flight uh, for 198 if you wanted to pay cash on the Chase portal and 269 on the Amex portal. And yeah, the point total of 26,000, you know, it's more than double. It's more than twice what you can book the same flight in Chase points. For comparison, let's just go on Delta's website and see what are they charging in Delta points because potentially you can always transfer your Amex points one to one to Delta. So let's just go down here to the 10 a.m. flight uh, we need to we need to switch this to miles. 
And yeah, if we go down to the 10 a.m. flights, I'm seeing here it's saying 14,000. So you could transfer your Amex points to Delta and book this flight for 14,000, or you could use their portal and Amex is gonna charge you 26,000 points. That is ridiculous. So if I haven't convinced you yet, maybe you're still saying, but Jake, maybe it's just Delta. Maybe it's just that one route to Minneapolis. Let's try booking a flight. Once again, an example for me, I know there's a direct flight on United that goes from Minot to Denver every day. So let's search both portals, Minot to Denver. Now United is a partner of Chase, so I normally would expect that uh, the, the deal would be better with Chase on Chase's portal, but let's go ahead and compare the two fairly. For the flight leaving Minot to Denver on these dates, uh, there's a 150 flight nonstop, and it's telling me the price is either $394 or 26,000 chase points. On the Amex portal, it's saying 465 or 46,000 points. So you have a difference of 394 and 465 or 26,300 points or 46,480. For comparison, let's go on United's website and do this exact same search for these dates, May 5th to May 12th. And you can find this 150 flight for only 22,000 United points. If we go back to the Chase portal, 22,000 United points would be about 4,000 points less than the Chase portal when getting your 1.5 boost. So this actually is a good example of when you would want to transfer your Chase points to United at a one-to-one -one rate in order to get a discount on your booking. That's why it's really important to both look at the portal and go to that, uh, that company's website, United this time, in order to make sure that you're getting the best deal for your points. Okay guys, that's all I got for this video. I mean, I hope that you know I, I demonstrated clearly that it doesn't matter what you're searching for, hotels or flights, or abroad or domestic you know in my last video I, I i sided with getting the chase sapphire reserve over the platinum and this is one of the reasons i think the booking portal for the average consumer is very important you you need it to be simple because who wants to have all these windows open and constantly be comparing saying hey am i getting ripped off or am i getting a better deal or what's going on yeah, I, I don't know why American Express, I mean, obviously the reason is money. They, they want to, uh, you know, uh, save money on costs of people redeeming their points, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't be this hard. You know, the American Express Gold Card gives you 4x back on dining, and the Chase Sapphire Reserve gives you 3x on dining. But if you're using your points to redeem in the portal, or even for transfer partners maybe, I feel like I would go 3x with Chase, uh, you know, every time as opposed to 4x with Amex because I think Chase points are just more valuable. Now you can make arguments that Amex has better transfer partners and you might want more points because you always transfer your points out. But for the simplicity of the Chase booking portal, it's powered by Expedia. Yeah, it's solid. You know, it just makes uh, the whole points and miles game a lot easier. Okay guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. In addition, if you uh, caught any mistakes I made in the video or you have your own booking stories of these two portals, definitely leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe. I post weekly about military and finance topics. And until the next video, take care.